Hello everyone, my name is Eli Ganim and welcome to EG Geo Lapidary. Today I'm going to talk to you about Willow Opal. Uh, a lot of people were asking and trying to cut Willow Opal and they're having problem with it. So I figured okay maybe it's time to put a video up and show you how to do it. Now the Willow Opal um, it was discovered by a farmer in 2008, the, uh, December of 2008, uh, in a town uh, called Wigoltena in Ethiopia. And uh, uh, it was in the Willow uh, province. Uh, that's why the name came uh, Willow Opal, because of the, uh, it comes from this province. The, to, to cut the willow opal it requires a lot of uh, uh, patient and special technique to do it so that's what we're going to talk about the techniques to how to cut it and to do it properly now I don't know if you know that or not but this type of opal it, it's hydrophane uh, what I mean by hydrophane is that when it's soaked with in water uh, it will actually the base color uh, it will go away so you will lose the color um, and it will look clear uh, sometimes it actually will highlight the color uh, and or sometimes it's going to make it vanish the uh, the reason for that is that if you look at the uh, willow opal um, under the microscope you will see actually like almost like very thin tubes in it that will actually absorb uh, the the uh, the water in uh, and if I take one this is a small one but if I wet my finger and put it on actually it will stick it will try to suck the water that I have in uh, uh, that I, I put in my finger so it tried to suck it out very hard also to get it out. Anyway, um, so if it vanish, if the colors vanish, uh, don't worry about it because usually it will come back uh, later on. And we're going to talk about this. Um, once the opal is cut properly and polished, dried and polished, it would be one of the brightest opal in the world. Um, so it takes twice as long as cutting uh, regular opal, but in the long run, the rewards are well worth it. So right now, the uh, the price of opal uh, has written dramatically up, uh, and the mines uh, it's been owned by. Uh, by the government. Um, so I bought mine uh, that was uh, came up 2008. I have I bought Willow Opal uh, in I would say around 2009 and 2010 at the beginning and uh, I have roughly about I think right now about five kilos uh, of the stuff. It's beautiful material. But what I'm trying to say is that I did cut at that time when I bought them and a lot of people were talking about yeah they're gonna crack and they, they, they're they not good enough and uh, uh, that's not true. Uh, they didn't crack and I still have some since then uh, so they've been I don't know uh, I would say eight, nine years that I, I cut them. Um, I have the material till today, uh, it's still uh, good. Now, like I said, water will vanish the color, so you don't put them in water. It's not like the other opal where you have to keep it in water. This one you don't. So, if you look at the material that I have, and here you could see some the colors they, they are amazing I mean, the colors the first of all they go all the way through um, the stone and so it doesn't matter how much you cut the 
color is going to stay there on the top. It's not like uh, a layer uh, opal where uh, it's just a thin layer that if you cut it or you cut a little bit deeper then it's gone. That's not the same way. So this here, it, it's all the way. The colors that are amazing on it. Now there is some also that has a bit of brownish color. I think I had here one. This is this one here. You know, there's a lot of uh, metrics around it, but it, it's brown on the inside. And uh, the there's some that they try to um, treat it and put, I think, molasses or something like that, but um, I wouldn't worry about that. So buy the good material, and they're all very good. There's some, though, uh, they're white, like this one here, but you still could see the color. I don't know if you could see that here or not, but you still could see the, the color. Uh, let me try to get it as close if I can. You could see some of the colors in there. So even that, you know, when you cut it, it's perfect. But uh, there's different grades also of colors. Uh, and the one that has like, like this one here, which is more, what I call them, uh, pins uh, that's showing up in colors. These are more expensive than just the flat one like that. So, I mean, this one is nice, beautiful. But, so, these here, they're a little bit more uh, inexpensive. If you can get them, um, they will be worth it. What you need to know also, here's another one. So now the material comes in with, with the metrics around it and try to get that metrics away. Uh, it's almost like sand and clay, but it's kind of hard. And you don't want to keep it around before cutting because once you get the water on it, it might uh, expand and crack your stone. You don't want to do that. So try to get as much as you can. Don't use this pen because you're going to poke yourself, I guarantee it. You're going to poke yourself, it's going to go and it's going to go right into your uh, your finger. So don't use one of these. I use a flat, um, this ruler, steel ruler, and just go in and try to clean it up as much as you can. But then you're going to grind them off anyway. Um, one thing you want to do because, like I said before, uh, since the color is going to disappear, uh, what you want to do is you want to make sure that you figure out where you wh what is the top of your stone and where is the base of your stone. So now you could see actually the colors before you start cutting and, and get the water on it and the colors vanish. So once you determine where is the base is and where the top is going to be, then go ahead and start cutting. So if you take a piece like that and says, okay, well, this looks nice here, so I'm going to round it from here. I get nice colors. And then you look at the back and say, well, okay, this is better, you know. So you might decide on, okay, so where is the base and where is the top? And you start working from there. Once you determine that, then you know at least where you're going from that point on. Another thing that you have to worry about or you got to watch for is the metrics themselves. Even though you see them on the, on the surface and if you think that if I take it out you see how easy it goes but if you take them out you actually don't know how far they go in and sometimes they will have just the pin hole that's going deep enough so when you cut and you say okay this is my surface and all of a sudden you, you have a, a pin hole right on the top uh, it creates a problem because what are you going to think that you're going to be doing is okay uh, if I cut it further down that will take it away but 
maybe it won't because if it's deep enough and you keep cutting you're actually taking from the whole surface so at that point you got to decide do you cut it at that where where the pin hole is and cut it out and then make two pieces instead of one that you're going to lose quite a bit of material so that you have to decide while you're cutting but this is one of the problem with with the metrics going into the uh, into the uh, the opal but once like i said once they're done i get some here like this one here you get all these pin pin color like pin point you could see it i don't know if i if i showed you close enough you'll be able to see that or not yeah look at this So this is looks nice. Then I have some more that uh, let me show you here. This this one here. This is already done. I get this one is done. This is done here. So I'm gonna put some pictures of the finished one. These are small. But um, most of the big ones, they don't last, they just go, uh, they're sold right away. Uh, but these here are, uh, when, you, when you take the small ones, especially something like that. Here you go. See, these are, are kind of small, but when you add them uh, to one of your design as a cab, if you're making a cab and you add these little ones, in the cab, uh, they they just bring it right out. It looks super. It looks really nice. Uh, but if you get something big like that, you'll have an amazing piece that it's cut and it's polished. There's a lot of people do carving too, and I'm gonna eventually I'm gonna get into carving. Uh, I got some pieces that what I need to carve that they are not straightforward. Uh, they got a lot of uh, curves in them that. Uh, if I cut them, I will be cutting, I will be cutting too much away of the material, which if you carve them and you follow the shape of the um, of the uh, the stone itself, then you'll have something that really look will look nice. Here is another one that is white, but uh, you could see the the colors are amazing in it and all the uh, red points coming out from it. So, if you get something like that, these are beautiful uh, stones that you can cut. Here's some more here. There's another one. <clears throat> like I said, there's no water in it, nothing. These materi the, the material here, they're, 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 they just like any source of light. And they will just come right out. Uh, whether indoor, outdoor, uh, any type of light is just going to bring that material, it's going to sparkle like crazy. So <clears throat> stick around and uh, the next thing we're going to go in and I'm going to cut a few and I'll show you how to do it and how to polish it later on. Uh, one thing I forget to mention <clears throat> that um, don't you don't clean that opal or any opal uh, with the uh, uh, cleaner any material to clean it don't use oil because um, it will absorb right in uh, <clears throat> excuse me um, don't use any penetration penetration any penetrating solution that will go into the opal and stays that so Having said that, one of the things that you got to watch when you cut um, that opal, we know that the water that we're going to be using is going to go in. So if your um, wheels, cutting wheels, diamond wheels, um, they are dirty and the water is dirty, you're going to get it inside. You're going to have it in 
and you might have a problem with it. Use clean water, use fresh water that's continuously going in, and, uh, and make sure that your wheels are clean before you start cutting. For instance, if I'm cutting material that uh, uh, similar to cobalite material, which is silver, and then this is black color <clears throat> with the silver in it, but everything turns black. Everything turns black. The wheels are going to be black. I have to clean them first. I have to run or cut something else before I go in and, and cut my willow opal. So make sure that your wheels are clean and your, uh, your water is clean. So stick around and let's go in and see some cutting and I'll see you in a bit.